Hi guys, happy Friday. Welcome to the Design Exchange. This is episode one of season four, and I am happy to kick off season four with one of my great friends. She's been an influence on me. She's an influencer herself. She is the amazing Camille Cower from Cary, North Carolina. Right. Camille, how are you? Wait, I have, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. I am honored to be here, especially your first for season four. Congratulations on four seasons! Well, I exciting. can't believe you're the one that taught me to do seasons because we were we have we've recorded 175 Design Exchange podcasts, and you were the one that we talked over the summer. I'm like, I'm just dying. I need to get podcasts out and you were the one that told me to do it in seasons. So we, I was like, well, we've been doing this for five years. So where do I start? And we decided season four, you were the one that gave me the idea. We actually, you got me to sign up. So our podcast is actually part of the SAG after guild for the um, podcast portion of the um, screen actors guild. Is that correct? Yeah. Screen actors guild after. And your screen actors guild after um for podcast as well as an actress mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yep so we're all going to talk today about how to start a podcast and the importance of a podcast because when i started this i had no clue what i was doing i spent so much money on equipment and microphones and lighting and i just ended up realizing five years later that I really didn't need to do all of that. And you've helped me a lot. And it's gotten to the point where you really just need um, a good headset, a good microphone, and a good webcam. And that's pretty much all you need. I think you're using my old microphone because I, I had no idea how to work it. And I've gone, I went through so many different microphones. I'm literally talking to you on an old set of Bose headphones. Cause that's the only thing I can figure out how to work. <laughs> it's so, so when you got, yeah. When you got started, did, how did you get started with podcasting? How did you learn what equipment to use and what things to use? Well, it's interesting. So like when I, I had, thankfully, I had the background already with film. I already had the background with, um, radio but i never knew the tech side of any of those things like i had they, we had a producer we had other people that did our audio and video and all that stuff so it was a learning curve for me because i started my podcast during the pandemic and you didn't really need to have the best quality of things during that time because everybody was going live right wait how did i how did i cameras. start my podcast before you oh yeah i don't know well <laughs> So technically, let me go back. So before it was called podcasting, it was vlogging. It was streaming. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I was doing that. I was doing that since 2017, but we weren't putting it on podcast platforms. It was only we were, living on we started, Facebook. Yeah, we went, I went backwards. We started on yeah. um, just recording, and then we started videoing and doing the Zoom and doing it this way. Because I think people like to see us. Mm -hmm. um i like I, I feel like people like to listen and see so i post these out as the audio file and the video file and i had to learn how to be a lighting technician an audio that's engineer what I get exactly a, and this it's is that's lot. why i'm that's why i'm wearing the shirt because after these podcasts i feel like i need to go to therapy <laughs> but i mean no joking aside you could spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars when you really don't need to and <laughs> Be be careful with taking podcast courses. Uh, there are some good ones and free ones on YouTube. Uh, Hello, like CamilleCower.com. Camille Cower has taught me a lot. No, but... I'm saying I have videos. Oh, you? Yeah. I do. How oh. to podcast like an actor. I have a whole tab with videos that I've made, videos for me speaking at other colleges about starting your own podcast, speaking at PodFest even. I have a bunch of them on my website. But yeah. you don't. You probably didn't know all of that because you don't. No, I didn't have me as a coach. So I have I you. I I have you as my twenty four seven for you. <laughs> yes. So you don't need the so, YouTube. Yeah. 
if you guys are just listening, um, me and Camille, she's been on the podcast probably about five or six times now. I've been on hers multiple times. She's had me on ESPN Radio in Raleigh. Um, I've been wherever. I just appear wherever she tells me to go. And it is High Point Market Week, and we are going to be together um, on Sunday. And we're probably going to do another lot. We're actually going to go live on Sunday, I think. So if you're following um, the Design Exchange on Facebook, if you're following Danny Russo, Daniel Russo Home, or Camille Cower, um, and the eSpot Instagram, we're going to figure it out. We'll ha- we're going to have multiple people recording us doing multiple things with multiple microphones. Because I, like I said, backup, backup. <laughs> yeah. oh yes, you always want to have a backup. Like we, when we got on this today, there's always an audio issue, and I already I was trying something new, had an audio issue, and I knew my reliable thing was these Bose headphones. Went right in, and we got started. Last, yep. we actually recorded this episode um, about what three or four weeks ago, and somehow it just got lost. And I lost two podcasts that day, and I was so frustrated, but I've learned how to actually just save them, edit them, don't delete anything, back everything up, um, put it on SoundCloud. So the way a podcast works is you can't just point a camera at yourself and hit record. You have to have something hosting the podcast to push it out there to Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all the other podcast things. What I use is SoundCloud. Camille, you use something different. Yeah, I right? use um yeah, I use Spotify for podcasters. It used to be called Anchor. Okay. Is that so how much is that a month? Zero dollars. Are you kidding me? Zero. Okay. Get- so mm-hmm. the more you know, because I literally um I think I pay for SoundCloud to host all of our tracks. And then I will record these with Zoom. If I'm not doing them live, I record them with Zoom. And then I'll process them through iMovie. And then I export them as a video file. And then I export them as an audio file. Then I upload them to SoundCloud. And then I upload them to YouTube. And then I schedule the premiere. And sometimes I'd hate having to edit them. And I've had a lot of media training, so typically try to make the editing process uh, pretty simple. And if you have a podcast, what would you recommend someone to know if they're interviewing a guest? Like, what's your process? I like it to be natural and I'm going to let you talk because I over talk and I'm going to let you talk. No, it's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Olivia, your mother told me that I need to let you talk more. (laughs) So I'm going to take Olivia Pope's advice. (laughs) No, no, I, I literally have a post-it that says don't interrupt because I have that tendency of like you get really excited when you're talking to your guest and they're saying things and you're like, yeah, I agree, I agree. But then when you're editing it and you're like, oh, we can't hear the exact words because you're speaking over each other or it's just even if it's just a hum, a hum, you know, it, so that's one of the things I I have to remind myself on a regular basis because I'm ADHD. And of course, I love talking with you and we talk on the phone in real life. So on there, we can't interrupt each other. Right. So I mean, we are we are ADHD. That's like we I mean, we cover we cover so many topics and so much stuff all over the world. And we're just our conversations are it is it is like so our husbands know each other. (laughs) <laughs> They're starting their own support group. Yeah, for each other. <laughs> being married to a Danny or a Camille is not easy. So, like no. some of the things that I would say for people just getting started, like my process may not work for them because of those things I mentioned: being ADHD, being dyslexic. It's not so easy for me to follow a script when I'm speaking to someone and I'm somewhat nervous, as opposed yeah. to when I'm on a set where I have somebody that's taking care of the audio. I have somebody that's taking care of the lights. Everybody, like only job I have is to act and react and listen. You know what I mean? Like I can stay in character, so to speak. But when you're podcasting, you have too many hats really for for me anyway, because I am editing. I am like self, like I don't want to have to. We're the audio. We're the audio engineer. We're the lighting engineer. We're the post-production. We're the pre-production. All of it. 
So, so I want to make sure whenever my guest is on that I'm showcasing the best things I can about them. And if I'm reading a script, I wouldn't be able to because I'm not listening to them so much to like, because, you know, like if you're having a, just a genuine conversation, you're not gonna be like, okay, well now, um, what did you do when you were five? Okay. Now, what did you do? You know, you're not going to be. I, my recommendation that. would not to do that with your guest. I like just it being an, or, an organic conversation and I write down talking points, but everybody does things differently. So Absolutely. what would you say your five steps are? I'm going to throw you a loop and I knew you're, sure. I knew you're going to do that because <laughs> I'm going to try to answer the question as well. But yeah. what would you give to somebody if somebody came to you and said, Hey, Camille, I know you have the E spot with Camille and you're great. How would I start my own thing like you? What would be five tips you would give somebody? Well, first off, don't try to be like me. Be you. Be your own best version yes. of you because that's a I good one. Very weird. <laughs> like, and I'm not consistent with it because I'm ADHD, out of sight, out yeah. of mind. I might forget some steps here and there, but I would say be true to you, like figure out exactly what you would be willing to talk about for how many years have you been doing this? Me? Yeah. Podcasting? Uh -huh. I, we're, go we're going on your spot. We're going on your spot. Right. So think of something that you're willing to talk about for five years minimum. Like think about what you can talk about for that long and to so many different people within that industry or whatever it may be for five years. Like yeah. that's the main things for me uh, um, would be that. Do you want to have so, to build in guests or are you going to, or are you going to be your, are you going to have a co-host? Like what format you want to do with that? Like think it through again, five years minimum mm -hmm. that you're going to have to always try to find guests or is this something you can count on that person to be a consistent co-host? And There's we've that. had issues. We've had issues with guests not showing up or not respecting time. I've been guilty. Yeah. I've been guilty of being one, mm. and I've learned from you not to do that to well, anybody. Did to me. <laughs> I did. I did do it to you years ago, and I will never do it again. Well, it I wasn't completely your fault, so it, we all understand. Yeah, it was, life that happened. Was a different time. Yeah, yeah. You were you were literally out of college, and they told you it was going to be thirty minutes, and they loved you so much. It was three hours. <laughs> Seriously, no, it was supposed to be five minutes that. and it was three hours. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> you get what yeah. I'm saying? You yeah. can't predict that. But at the same time, what are you going to do? Not make the money, not hang out with these people that inspire them? Like, come on. Yeah. I'm understanding. So, and that's my thing too. Like I work, I work gig work too. So if I get called and they need me at the Home Depot studio, guess where I'm going to be? At the Home Depot studio. So like yeah. think of those too. Like how can you make sure you're consistent? That's where the seasons came in for me. Just like most TV shows that I watch have seasons and they have a certain amount of episodes for each season. Once I hit that number, I'm like, oh, the season's done. Or if things just start getting really hard, like I have a lot of tech issues, a lot of clients aren't showing up or you know like it just feels like the universe is working at you too hard then yeah. it's time to take a break whether it's that's a high why, for a couple of weeks or for a couple of months take yeah you know, that's why I, I love the season idea and just mm -hmm. get it done once and then we're gonna go and we're gonna be good for the we're launching on friday season four this friday and we're going to be in high point market so so I don't want to, we got we get off track with our ADHD and well, all the one thing I wanted to say have ADHD go yeah well one thing I wanted to say is like it's also Friday the thirteenth like it oh. couldn't be any more luckier in October I thought about that <laughs> and Taylor Swift's movie was supposed to come out on Friday because her favorite number is thirteen but she actually released it early last night and her and Beyonce uh, were in LA at the premiere and just her and Beyonce eating popcorn. And Beyonce's Normal coming Tuesday, out Thursday, with, Wednesday. Her tour is going to be um, in theaters as well. Like, so I thought I thought that was really cool Christmas. this morning. Yeah, isn't it like Christmas or something? I don't know. I don't I'll be know. the first to admit I'm not a Swifty and I'm not in a beehive, so I don't know. I'm a I'm a Swifty, but I don't know that I don't know her songs. I love uh, Beyonce. I love Destiny's Child, but I don't know. If, I don't know how much I love Beyonce. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we, like I, was, I love some of her songs, but then yeah. some I'm like, and then I saw people that are, I think her concert looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Her stage production. Like I would have went to all that. the concert gores. Like that was the place to go. Oh for my God. Watching, I yeah. believe too. Yes. Yeah. But mm, 
I have a kid that I have to save up for a college and car. I cannot <laughs> justify going to a concert that I'm not a big fan. Of. Like I like her. Don't get me wrong. And I'm more of a Destiny's Child fan than I am a Beyonce fan. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like girl groups. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know why yeah. they had to break up. Yeah. I loved NSYNC no. and then Justin Timberlake had to mess everything up. So we're getting sidetracked. Our but five going tips. back to that, even like with figuring out whether you want to be a Beyonce or if you want your Destiny's Child to be part of your podcast, you know, some yeah. people like a group. In our podcast, mine's called The Design Exchange, and it's basically geared toward our clients and younger designers. And me and Melinda typically host it. And we have two different aesthetics. And I had to make the decision. I knew I wanted to start a podcast, but... I didn't think that I personally could stand talking to a camera for 30 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. So I started auditioning co-hosts and that's, I found Melinda and we just went from there. So that's a decision that you have to make because it can be mentally exhausting trying to come up with ideas and stuff. I, I have a note. I keep, I do have notes in my phone of topics that I'll think of and keep, uh, for the future to reference yeah, and yeah. i could tell you that this season we've already recorded eight episodes and everybody has been asking me after the podcast how i podcast how did i get started how did it, what equipment did i get yeah. so um we used to have a receiver called a scarlet we used to have uh sure microphones which camille's on um I have a sure microphone sitting next to me that was expensive. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> um, I ended up going back to the basics. And a lot of my guests have just used Apple EarPods. And we've been ah. recording through Zoom. When we record in person, oh my God, anything can go wrong. So I was trying to use a new gimbal uh, when we were recording uh, this past week. And we talked for 35, 40 minutes. And the phone went to sleep. Because I was recording through the gimbal app and we lost all the content. And so then we had to restart it and re-record it. And then the UPS driver showed up because we were in the hallway. Yeah. And I mean, I love the natural things that just happen yeah, around. Yeah. But sometimes it just is too much. So you want to make sure you have a quiet setting somewhere where you're set up where there's not a lot of distractions. You want to think do you time your episodes like i try to make our episodes about 30 minutes yeah um I try but then I let, if, the, if the guess is interesting i let them go over but i hope that people um listen to me on what's that called when you multiply the um when you listen to somebody faster like you can oh, hit time right. two. <laughs> yeah, I figure people are just sitting. Yeah, <laughs> like they'll just listen to me faster, and yeah. hopefully that gets them through it uh, faster. I don't know. I mean, I but, listened to them all faster once I found out that was an option. I was like, wait, that's what that stands for? Oh, let's see how yeah. fast go. Yeah. I even but, um, I've even used that trick with editing where I made like if I, I had a guest who was just very interesting in conversations. Like I during the interview completely into it like could not hear enough of this person but then when i listened to it back i was like oh wow they talk kind of at a slower pace and yeah. almost is painful so i sped it up a little bit not much but it also helped me meet my 30 minute mark because <laughs> we were going we were lagging a little bit over that so that's like another trick that i recently discovered that you can use but that's the thing like you keep going in classes you find a good podcast community that can support you or you yeah. can you know, be, be one of my clients and I can <laughs> it too, but it's like, um, it's, it is, it's not, it's something trial and error. It's trial without, and error. Yeah. It is something you definitely need to have someone you can reach out to, to get advice or get, or throw ideas back. Cause we talk on a regular basis. Now that and, goes back to networking because yeah. me and you met randomly at mm -hmm. high point market where technically we're at right now, as people are listening to this, if they're listening to this, yeah. um, we're at High Point Market, so if you see us, come say hi. One of us may have big red shoes on, and um, I must have gifts for you. Oh, um, but I have I literally have on my computer. Don't say um, and that's one of my tips: is don't say um, don't have dead air, don't mm -hmm. overspend on equipment. Um, it is trial and error. If yes. you have a PC, uh, 
you could download the Zoom app. I don't know if Zoom's free or not. I think I have a paid thing because I use it so much. Right. And then yeah, I, yeah, I record these and I throw them into iMovie. And then. Okay, wait. You mentioned this whole step before and I have to interrupt you. I'm so sorry because that's way too many steps. And so I have a much easier process that I do yeah. just to throw it out there just to make it easier for some of those other people or even yourself for that matter. Instead of SoundCloud, mm -hmm. I use the Spotify podcaster and it does. Yeah. And I download it from video form and because they allow videos, I just drop it in as a video. I don't have to do the audio one too. That's one step. You're, left. You're, you're and it goes to all the weekend. different. I'm sorry. You're going to have to show me this this weekend. Easy. And from from Spotify podcasters platform, it very easily, I it already sends it to all the other platforms by the RSS feed. It does it through that way. So that's how I get it everywhere else. And then I upload as well to YouTube, YouTube podcast that way too. But I only have can two you, that I upload. Can Sorry. you explain to people what an RSS feed is? Because when I started this, I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know you... I have no clue. A lot of these things, I don't need to know. I just need it to work. I don't need to know. I'm, I'm a podcaster. I'm an actor. I'm a mom. I'm a spa specialist. I'm an esthetician. <laughs> I am not a technician. I worked in marketing. No. I worked in web design. I've worked, you know, I got my um, digital marketing. That does not mean I know all this tech stuff. I'm not an engineer still. <laughs> I'm still not that RSS. Yeah, Dance so I don't know. For... I think it's like your where it lives and they can like automatically. Oh my God. I can't else. even say this. It's Russia Tyra Shawaska Minsavak Sheng. I'm pretty sure that's not it. Like I no, think I'm, you... looking, I, I'm on Wikipedia. RSS is a web feed that allows users oh, okay. and applications to access updates to websites in a standardized computer readable format. So it basically but you means... said some weird name. That was the Hindu. Oh, sorry. Organization. It's just oh. really simple syndication is what it stands for. Really simple. Okay. See how I, I, I was like, that I, sounds I, 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 Hindu. I, missed, I missed that big word right in front of me. That's okay. <laughs> I was like, let me help my brother out real quick. And so we, we didn't know each other. We didn't know each other when I started no. this. And like, I was like, we were recording on, um, a computer we had to do it in person we had to have this scarlet box we had to have two microphones and it was just and then we had to we were just pushing it out to soundcloud and we were only doing audio and then we upgraded to video but i literally have a warehouse with a shelf full of equipment that i need to get rid of but um it's I not an easy scarlet boxes real quick so that's it an was... audio interface got it you had yeah you have to have an audio interface to process your to process any of your um to process any of your process your audio yeah i was like over here yeah. like, you're putting out, you're pointing at the mics i have a light that went out and i was like why did my light uh, just go out and then it got bright and i'm like why is it bright because that's real uh, light. this lighting is is lighting really is really important in a podcast too in a vlogcast now are we vloggers? Are we podcasters? Are we both? Has that has the term merged? Because I, I feel like people want to yeah. see it. They want to hear it. So I push this out through YouTube. I push this out through all the Spotify apps. And we go from there. I so, agree with that. I think if you... Well, here, let me back up. As a woman, I realize that we have to put on our makeup every day for filming. At least I do. So depending on what your level of comfort is as far, because I, I realized oh, girl, I work in front, in front of my the camera yesterday and the new iPhone, I, I recorded the pod. I actually recorded the podcast yeah. on my iPhone with wireless microphones that were plugged into here. I'm going to show you them when I see you at market, <laughs> but I recorded off the phone and the camera was so freaking good. You could see every blemish on my face. Yeah, nobody and I was like, me. I was like, oh my god, this phone is too good. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody but knew. we record. I recorded everything on the phone. So, yeah. an easy and an easy way to do this, if you wanted to start a podcast, you can record it on your phone with your Apple earbuds or headset, and then you can, if you're a Mac user like me, you can airdrop it to your computer, 
And that's what I did with uh, multiple episodes yesterday. Yeah. Other option, we record on Zoom if our guest is farther away, and it gives you the range of having more guests. But if you're confident and you have the personality and you can carry a podcast for X amount of minutes and do it on your own, that's an option for you. That eliminates a lot of hassle and that eliminates a lot, a lot of planning of and time. Yeah. But I mean, thank God for Camille, because every time I have an issue, I just call her. And we actually, like I said, we recorded this episode two weeks ago, and I was just mortified. I recorded two episodes, and I totally lost them. I don't know where they went. I don't searched be. everywhere. Don't be. I've had uh, and I'm traumatized from it. <laughs> Don't be like, that's the big thing about like, nobody knows this, but in movie studio, movie films, when they film a two hour movie, it takes them six months, right? Oh, takes yeah. them six months. So how many takes do you think they do? How many, like, we're not doing all of that. <laughs> you know, we're making this maybe in an hour and taking a week to edit and get everything squared away. Like it doesn't have to be completely perfect. And that's the other thing I think people like. Girl. Presume you be- have to be perfect <laughs> to do this. this no, is, just I, I, this has got to be this. This podcast right now is going up tomorrow, which is <laughs> Friday the 13th. So I got to get my hair cut at two o'clock. So I'm going to be running out of here and coming back to reprocess this and get this posted and getting ready for the market. I can't so, wait. You have so much stuff to share. But yeah, yeah. I also Five use tips. BeLive Five instead tips. of Zoom. Be- be live. Tell tell everybody what that is. Yeah. So um be live. I've been using them since 2017. I used to be a producer for another TV show and I hosted that. I, well, Facebook show. Um, and that's why I use that program because I knew of it way before Zoom existed, even. I guess maybe Zoom existed in 2017. I just wasn't aware of it. So I had already used that. I was a producer, I was a host, I was a I knew how to multi-use that. And it's very simple, very easy for people like me who don't want to become a tech person <laughs> it's very you're, you're you are very techy and you're very savvy and i don't think you give yourself enough appreciation for that because i have the roadcaster sitting next to me and i have no idea what to do with it i'm literally considering flying you in to set this shit up for me you'll be so and... mad at yourself that you did that just because it's so simple but you're right well, I, I i can't figure it out and i'd rather have you come and know columbus and i could take you to the places that we talk about because camille didn't know where columbus ohio was until she met me and now she knows more about columbus than most human beings in the united states and yeah so camille what's your website so everybody knows it camillecoward.com and all my socials are on there as well okay and then what are your five tips summarize them real quick and i'll give you mine five tips do it ugly do it anyway. Um, do it scared. Um, doesn't matter how much money you have, do it. And we need to hear your voice. So do it. <laughs> Just do it. So basically, <laughs> I would say be yourself, be organic. Mm. Don't spend too much money. Mm-hmm. Trial and error is a big thing. And you will learn from your mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes and have fun. Have fun doing it. Enjoy the people that you talk with. And networking is a big thing. So me and Camille met, what was it, five, six years ago at Market in a showroom. And we didn't know each other. And I just walked up and I was like, hey, you look familiar. (laughs) You look like Olivia Pope from Scandal. And I called her that for the longest time. And then her mother's name is actually Olivia. (laughs) And then I met her mother. And then I'm like, oh, it's Mrs. Olivia Pope. <laughs> and then I met her husband and then I met her daughter. And then we ended up becoming friends and we've traveled. She's hosted panels in Dallas. I ended up being her assistant. I've been on panels. She's come to help me. But we get to run into each other twice a year. Right. At least. At market. Yeah. 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 And I love that. I wish it was more. You make me want to live in Columbus, which is weird because I hate cold weather and it's Ohio. It's not near anything that I relatively know of a place that like it's not near anything that I normally think of somewhere I would want to be like a beach. (laughs) Our weather's a little bit schizophrenic right now. Like Mm -hmm. when you wake up, it's winter. 
Mm-hmm. By um, 11, 12 o'clock, it's spring. Yep. By 4 o'clock, it's summer. And by 8 o'clock, we're in winter. And Same. that's just the seasons right now. Granted, our winters aren't as brutal as your winters, but yeah, we're going through the same thing because I'll wear, Ours Uggs aren't, I mean, by the end of the day, I'm wearing flip flops makes zero sense. Oh, yeah. I'm an expert at layering, which I never <laughs> thought I would be, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't That's know. Fun. It's podcasting is really fun. So, <laughs> and also networking. That's what I wanted to touch on with you because you are an amazing networker and I feel like I am too. And I can just go up to anybody. Like I went up to you that day in Zuo Modern and we just started talking and we became friends from there. And um, that's opened so many doors for me with attending markets and just being nice to people, talking to people, um, being myself. And you have done that as well to the point where you have been asked to host. What was that event that you just hosted with the purple carpet? Oh, yeah. The Nurse Boss Summit. That was yeah. Fun. Yeah. And you've hosted fundraisers. As a, Galaxy um, Con. Yeah. Lots of things. Yeah. I'm having fun. So, and you made those connections through network. having your network, through your networking. And podcasting. Yeah. Through your podcasting. Mm-hmm. So as an interior designer, podcasting has become very important because our clients are watching our podcast and we're explaining our design processes. We're explaining them to younger designers for them to edu- get educated as well. And we don't want to be a coach. We don't want to be a coach. I mean, I don't. I know Melinda doesn't. But I mean, we we try to we help people. And we we have two completely different aesthetics. But we have good chemistry on camera. And it was so fun being together the other day and actually being able to record in person. Like, I can't wait to see you on Sunday. And hopefully we can record something. But mm-hmm. I can tell you, I'm not going to be drinking this market. So we might have yeah. done. No, I'm I know. Sorry. no. <laughs> you sound like a no. slush. No. <laughs> No, I'm going to be, I'm no, just going to be observing, you're... meeting, I'm going to be filming content, and I've been getting into the TikTok game, I don't even know how to use it, but I, my, I um, see your reels and videos, you're doing great, I, Andy. Yeah, I have a great content creator who's um, on our team, and I have an amazing publicist, and I have some amazing things in the works, I have not been able to talk too much about them. But I want everybody to see because it's all going to come out at once. And um, there's going to be some very fun things happening. I don't even think I've told you yet because we haven't talked this week. But after this, I'll call you when I'm on my way to my haircut and um, fill you in. That's but, so funny that we both got our hair done, get our hair done today. <laughs> <laughs> you called me on the, as I was leaving the salon. <laughs> I was like, wait, let me I know. <laughs> And I was coming here and I'm like, I got to go and get this. I'm like, oh, maybe I can get Camille in and maybe I can get that all scheduled because it took me. So we recorded yesterday and we recorded um, three episodes yesterday Mm -hmm. and we recorded from noon and we stopped recording at 5 p.m. I was processing until 1030 p.m. Mm -hmm. I was editing, processing uploading and i was just i got to the point where i actually started crying and i don't know why but i got so emotional because i felt accomplished everything like worked out recording wise and i don't know i just i I did a release yeah yeah but don't get discouraged if you do start a podcast and you could be talking to nobody at first and you just start you You get started i know it's so funny because i I'll hear people say, I'll hear people say, oh, my God, podcasts are the new thing. And I'm like, we've been doing this for five years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they're not the new thing. And the other thing I hear is wallpapers back. And I hear that once a week. And we're Mm -hmm. like, wallpaper never went anywhere. We've been doing it for 10 years. So. So, yeah. Make sure you're following Camille. I want to talk. I mean, there's something else. I want you. You have something else to promote, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I, well, where, okay. 
Yeah, I guess the big thing. Um, so, uh, what is the thing that you want me to put? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> okay. I mean, you have your the E spot, and you have right, some great right. Guys. You've been interviewing some great actors, some pretty big uh, actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had um the Orlando Jones on, of course, because of SAG after strike. I wasn't allowed to ask him about any of his struck work, but he did kind of hint at a couple of things here and there. And I had interviewed him before back at ESPN Radio, as a matter of fact. So yeah. you can see that previous interview and you can hear about him talking about all the things. The strike's that over, right? Are we still No, it's not. It's not. So um, they they had res uh, so for the writers it is over. They did yeah. like finalize that contract. They all voted for it. It's officially over for writers. So that's why like oh, a lot good. of the top shows, different things were able to come back without getting called scabs, except for one, I yes. guess. And then um, after that with SAG AFTRA, they were meeting this week. They actually were meeting yesterday or restarted negotiations because they had like left negotiations sometime during the summer, I believe. And they restarted it yesterday and they did not come to an agreement. They, there was actually a very fiery letter that was sent out from the union explaining how the AMTP, AMTP, I always want to call them AMTP because toilet paper, but I might have it backwards, but it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> those people over there um, were still trying to like, I understand the importance of AI. I do understand that you can use it for good, but they're still trying to use it for evil. They're not trying to pay people for their image. And like, so what? You'll be dead. We can still use the image. No, my family can benefit from it. You can't just use you know, ever. Rob, like, Robin, Robin Williams had it written into yeah. all of his contracts that Disney can't release any of the movies that he was in. I, I believe Aladdin he was in. Right, um, yeah. He, he voiced a bunch of characters and they're not allowed to release that. He had that in his contract. So if they have, they go to remake something, they can't use his old voices. Mm. So, but I mean, I don't, I, but I don't for know how years that... they've been taken for granted for people. Cause there's been a, even a movie I did. They use, well, I knew I was recording it. Obviously I came and wardrobe, blah, blah, blah. But I did not know that they had upgraded me and started a voiceover. So then I should have been paid more for that. And that made me a bigger part of the film because the original part that was supposed to play in that film was a character, was like an actual like bigger payday. And they just like timing didn't happen, which it happens. They weren't yeah. able to film my shots that were supposed to be the bigger character. And like, I never even thought to be like, hey, by the way, you guys are supposed to pay me for that when the strike happened, a lot more actors were being open about the facts of how many times they've been cheated. Cause a lot of times when you're taking advantage people of people don't you're realize, like, no. like, tell, people don't realize, tell them what your residuals are. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, if you want, you don't have to, No, it's okay. a okay. lot of, a lot of people don't realize the residuals for actors are not what people think they are. You'll get a check for a couple cents if you even get the check. And if you do get the check, you get it like a year later or something. But a lot so of actors don't make the money that people think they do. No. Well, like maybe the J Lo's and the, um, the J yeah, yeah. Jennifer Garner's and the Brad, like the people that you hear the $20 million contracts, they're fine. They're going on vacations during um, the writer's strike and this SAG strike. They're doing great. They went to con, you know, not con, met yeah. and got, all the stuff. They were having a great time. Us yeah. normal people who might be just the third character to the left, <laughs> the best friend of the best friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Those of us who are like, that, even some of the, I, like some of the people that were even on some of these bigger names and who were like characters that were multiple seasons, um, multiple seasons and episodes were even saying, those paychecks got fast really quick with streaming. So I was lucky. I was on a show that pre dot. Um, I almost said the name of the show. Pre strike. Are we, are we allowed? Wait, are we allowed? To <laughs> no, I'm not allowed. Mm -mm. Okay. Because it'd be like are, because, of, so. because of the strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just to be safe. Like you can say it. Yeah. I can't. Or I can't okay. promote it. Um. So I'm not. I'm not, so not going to say it because I stand yeah. with you as Thank a screen actress guild podcasting person. I stand with you. <laughs> so um. So what happened was with SAG after um with my thing because streaming wasn't an issue when. It was just like you caught it and then maybe they'd have a rerun in like five years or something. So I got residuals because it was a top show and they were making tons of money. So I got 30 percent of my pay each time it would air yeah. and it would dwindle like it was like a cone almost like it would go down a little bit. And then it like streaming happened. Oh, well, 
everybody like the show ended they didn't really play it that much but then it went into syndication so i got a big paycheck for that and then um streaming happened oh no like I five don't, your streaming happened or something so it was I like don't think any of us money streaming again. coming no because it was like one minute we were netflixing and chilling with the cds and the next thing you know we're like oh i can just i can just what was i can lime wire this <laughs> remember lime wire it's almost the same thing. I used like, to be a DJ like, way wait. back when, and I used to yeah. use Napster, and that's how I got all my exactly. music. Well, so that's the thing. But, like, it's like, mm, well, you know, it's like they they knew it was coming. If they did that to music, why wouldn't they do it to film? Because we already had the VOD happening. So it was it was inevitable it was coming. It's just a matter of everyone having the technology at home to make it and work. Getting, yes. They're thinking ahead with this, like making sure because technology is moving so fast. And even though Robin Williams had that foresight, a lot of people don't, you know, like, no, 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 not at all. From, or it sounds so foreign that there's no way this could happen in my lifetime. And it does. So it's like they're. And I want to I really want to know why our cameras are not built into our monitors so that <laughs> I can be looking at you and the camera is behind the screen filming me. Because we were just having this discussion that oh, like with Facetime almost, like having a FaceTime yeah, like TV. Well, screen. I want like I I'm have to I want to look at you and talk to you, but I'm having to look up at the camera. Like, why aren't the cameras built into the monitor where we can? I don't know. That's, well, that's I the think thing. that's Here's coming next. Thing. But that's I mean, because we have webcams built into our cameras, but I mean into our computers, but it's. It's like, do you want a computer that does a computer job really well? Or do you want a computer that also does other things kind of good, but not as well? You know what I mean? Like I have a webcam because I want a really good picture. I, <laughs> I invested. Mean, my I first invested. few were webcams. I just used a yeah. webcam until. Yeah, I did too. I did too. The pandemic. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm working off an, an Opal now and I it's really, really good. Google it. O-P-A-L. There's one thing that I can let you guys know, and it's not fully developed yet, but I do I am now, and well, I've been for a while. I'm an Amazon affiliate, and I'm an Amazon influencer, and mm -hmm. I have an Amazon store that I just put together and launched this week. It's not fully done yet, but if you go to if you go to Amazon.com yeah. slash Danny Russo dash twenty you'll find my store on there. And I separated it into all of my favorite things for the home, for beauty, for technology, and uh, mm -hmm. kitchen and bath. But that's one thing. And then we're going to add all of our product to it when my online store launches later this year. So we're building, we're building an empire. I realize the importance. Of the twenty, yeah. because there's a uh, a lot of singers. <laughs> I need to. I, I think I'm trying to figure out how to change it, but yeah. I just we're not, we are now global, so all the products that are in my shop they're not from me. They are products that I either use or have used, and things that I like, mm -hmm. uh, and things mm -hmm. that I support. Um, and I would never recommend something that I haven't used. So whew, it was a long day setting that up. I just oh. got on Monday, I think. And that's so, a plug for BeLive. You can even use BeLive to go live on Amazon Live for the Amazon Live stores. We should do that one day. For I didn't even know that store. was a thing. Yeah. Remind, remind me and we're going to do that because we're going to Download gonna be the doing, app on your phone. Okay, Amazon text Live. It, tech, text it to me. So... Camille, yes, I love you. I love you and too. I wait to see you on Saturday or Sunday. I know. I know. And if you come early, let me know. I think we we get in at about eleven o'clock tomorrow, and this PM episode will be out uh, AM. AM. I'm coming early. I'm coming early, and I'm leaving late on, later in the afternoon on Monday. Okay, keep me posted. But... Yeah. I'm coming in early because uh, I want to. Just get, I want to see things before all the fans. I know we're, I'm watching, I'm watching. No, I gotta go pick I'm up watching. my I'm oh. late. <laughs> all right. Anyway, follow the Design Exchange Podcast, TDX Podcast on Instagram. Subscribe to the Design Exchange Podcast. Subscribe to the eSpot with Camille Cower. You can find me on Instagram at Danny Russo and the Daniel Russo Home. Camille, you can find at CamilleCower.com. 
the real oh. Camille Cower, yes. the real Camille Cower on Instagram and CamilleCower.com. And she will give you all kinds of web uh, podcasting sessions and she'll <laughs> teach you how to make it work. Absolutely. I love you guys. Happy Friday and happy market to you designers. I can't wait to see you all and I will be seeing you shortly. Can't wait. Thanks for coming on. Bye.